Good Monday morning, water priestesses and water witches. This is Anwen Evelyn here, and today I am bringing you a quick video all the way from North Carolina. So I am here in North Carolina on my book tour, and I am visiting old shops and old friends and meeting new, um, new people and uh, new shops and visiting old places and new restaurants, um, and it's been wonderful. Uh, yesterday I got to go and have a delicious seafood dinner. There's nothing like being able to eat fresh seafood um, right here on the coast. So, my trip so far has been wonderful. Um, I did have a bit of a flight snafu on the way here. My connecting flight was late and it um, interrupted um, me having enough time to get to my next gate, my connection flight. Um, but with a little spell work and manifestation, I was able to get to my gate at the very last second and um, they let me take a few deep breaths before I walked down um, towards the plane. So thankfully, um, magic and luck were on my side this time and so I made it and headed all the way down and I got to sit next to a wonderful couple who had a service dog and so it was a wonderful flight I got to pet the puppy and um, had some good conversations with my neighbors after we arrived here after I arrived here in North Carolina we got my bag and um, headed to a wonderful little Celtic um, pub and um, they had these beautiful wooden mermaids that they had imported all the way from Ireland um, and green men on the door and it was uh, really wonderful and we split uh, me and uh, my good friend split some food and headed home on Saturday um, we drove all the way to Greenville and we had a wonderful event at the Sojourners um, and I want to say thank you to everybody that attended that class and that came and for those that um, also came to the ritual and to those that came to the book signing um, and so backtrack a tiny bit here um, the Sojourners I taught a water magic class and we talked about all different types of water magic. We talked about lakes and wells and water spirits, mythology, um, archaeology, um, my conclusions to a lot of this data, um, Dr. Emoto, um, how to make charms, how to charge water, so many different things. And then we took a small break and we did a ritual with um, three sacred waters that I brought um, from Bath, Glastonbury, both the White and the Red Spring. And we did a meditation with this where we journeyed into the other world and down the well, into the world of fairy, where we got to interact with uh, the goddess Sulis and um, with ancestral priestesses. Um, and after that, then we had a small book signing event and um, we headed home, got some good food with some friends and um, just the whole weekend has just been talking about magic and mythology and mermaids and just so many wonderful things that I, I love talking about. That was, let's see, that was Saturday. So Sunday, um, I... I uh, did my class here in Wilmington, but I had some good friends, um, very old friends of mine, very dear people, um, my teachers. Uh, they came over for the day and we got to chat and we did, we talked about magic, we talked about um, the local environment, we talked about water magic, what they've been doing with magic, where they are with their practice, um, and then we all went out to a wonderful seafood dinner together. And we went over to Mystic Elements after, and I was able to teach my class. And I also wanted to say a big thank you to everybody that came to the class at Mystic Elements. It was such a beautiful space um, and such a beautiful environment. And um, I feel really blessed to have been um, able to present at this particular shop, but also the Green Greenville shop as well. Um, and uh, then we came home, everybody came home, and we did rune readings and talked about past lives and water magic and um, ancient mythos and alternative histories and so many amazing things. 
And one of my uh, teachers is a master rune reader, and so he offered um, to do readings that night, and so he was tucked in a corner, and he was throwing the runes for us, and um, it was a, a very nice um, little magical witchy weekend um, here in North Carolina. Um, now, this evening, I have the class at um, The Peddler and the Crow, which is in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Unfortunately, it's already sold out, so I'm not going to um, advertise that you come to the class. I'm very sorry it's sold out, um, and we are, I guess it's sold out plus one, so we're already over capacity and there is a wait list. Um, so, uh, I'm very sorry about that, but I am really looking forward to it tonight because I'm going to focus almost exclusively on the sea and sea magic. Um, and so I'll get to um, kind of talk about this with, uh, with everybody that's there, we'll talk about how to practice at the seashore and um, just all of this wonderful salty water magic that uh, is going to be this evening's class. And then um, Tuesday and Wednesday are filled with magical fun with friends and um, visiting and um, I've got all of my photos from the Witchcraft Museum and we're hoping to do a slideshow and talk about all the different items that are found there. Um, but, um, and, and a big thank you actually, I forgot to say this, to everybody who has already registered for my class this evening and that is going to be attending. Um, I really appreciate you and I, uh, I thank you so much for supporting my work, um, but also for bringing this into your own work and doing this at um, your own uh, beach, your home, or even in just your temple room. Speaking of temple rooms, um, here I am in my wonderful um, friend's magical ritual room, um, and I will say I'm a little jealous. <laughs> she has a beautiful setup up here, um, and I'm not going to show it to you because it's not for your eyes to see. Um, <laughs> you can see this. Um, but uh, her space is about twice, two and a half times the size of mine, and I uh, would love to have a little bit bigger of a room again. This would be nice, but um, she has so many wonderful um, workings going on in here, so that's one of the reasons why I'm not showing is uh, to keep silent, um, and so this is something that's not mine to talk about, but I will say that she told me that I could put this in the photo so that would be fine and um, this is a wonderful herb rack that she has up here um, and I, I adore it it's beautiful um, I might post some pictures of it on Instagram today for you to see <sighs> so I'd like to share what the message is I feel for from water this week and I believe that it's a message about protection um, and protection magic because that's been a little bit of a theme, an underlying current that's been running through um, this particular trip. And protection, of course, is to shield your energies or your physical body or um, your spiritual body from any incoming aggressive energy, psychic vampirism, um, just negative juju, um, even, you know, someone that you're really close to, like uh, your friend or your spouse that might be having a very bad day, they can often have some of that energy rub off on you. And so protection magic is, is just important for maintenance, especially in that particular type of case. But when you're traveling, it's also really important to um, protect yourself. And um, I, I carry a travel charm that I made out of um, a clam, an oyster shell. It's an oyster shell. And um, I carry that with me every time I travel. And it uh, has served me well. Um, it's also talking a lot about the cleansing aspect of water in protection magic. And this comes from um, a question that I had in one of my classes. Um, it was very personal to one of the attendees. Um, but the, the answer was that having the using the exercises from the book, um, either the waterfall, which the waterfall will come this way, or the tidal wave, which comes 
this way and using those visualizations often to shield yourself in the tidal wave, an emergency situation, or the waterfall in an overwhelming situation. And those are wonderful ways to be able to protect your energy and your, um, your space while still being able to interact with somebody that you need to. A lot of times our jobs or our mundane job may call you to work with people that you really don't want to or have clients that are um, energetically sick um, or just energetically aggressive. And so we have to constantly shield ourselves from these things. Um, and so water can be used in protection magic, not just through this visualization, um, but through um, the use of the, um, but by use of making water essences. So um, on my Instagram, um, right before I left, I shared a small video, um, just a tiny clip out of a tiny portion of my practice. Um, and I was creating an evil eye water essence. And while you should always protect yourself from the evil eye, you should probably wear a talisman, keep them in your homes and continually charge them. Um, when I'm traveling or even for just daily maintenance, it's really good to kind of have something that will give you a daily boost, almost like a recharge to rechargeable batteries. And so what I did is I placed my glass evil eye pendant into a bowl and then I added in some holy water, sacred water. I believe that this water was this, I think this is water from Bath. Um, which, yes, it was. It was water from Bath, um, which further correlates with Sulis because one of the um, beliefs that the um, meaning of her name is um, Eye or Eye of the Sun. And so um, having that eye connection with her and using that evil eye to create the water um, as a daily maintenance spray. And so now I have a small bottle of water that I can use to spray my physical body and help to kind of keep that um, evil eye energy at bay and to keep my aura clean. So if you're interested in seeing that, um, head on over to my Instagram and you can see the clip and read down in the comments. There's instructions on how to do it. Um, so anyways, um, I am going to go ahead and finish up this uh, video, which is supposed to be real quick. I just wanted to say hello check in. I've had a very, very busy weekend, but it's been wonderful. And I cannot wait to continue this week as I get to now kind of move into a period of personal interaction with um, old friends and old students and new students. And um, I still would like to spend some time um, near the local beach here um, because truth be told, there has not been a moment for me to go. Um, this has been the first time I've even had a break since I stepped foot off the airplane. So um, I do believe that tomorrow is going to be the day. Um, and I look forward to spending my time on the beach. And um, <sighs> Then the last thing I wanted to share is if you are in the South and you happen to be heading down to Georgia or live in Georgia or are in driving distance of Georgia, um, I will be teaching Friday at five o'clock um, on the cults of the Sacred Springs and the Holy Wells. And that will be at Mystic South in Georgia or in Atlanta, Georgia. If you're interested to know more, just Google Mystic South and it will come up and you'll be able to find the extensive list of classes and workshops and academic papers that are being presented. <sighs> the last thing that I want to end with, and then I'm going to officially stop the video, even though I think I said that like two minutes ago, um, is that I would like to... Tell you that there's so much knowledge and so much importance in mythology and in folklore and this is one of the reasons why I focus so heavily on the archaeological digs the anthropological data the uh, folk lore and folk magic um, recordings and even the old ancient texts is because 
the there isn't a water priestess or water witch lineage because it's been broken um there absolutely were water priestesses and water witches in the past but that line has been broken through time by aggressive masculine cultures taking over and destroying so when you're going through your work finding the mythos of the spirits that you're working with finding the folklore of the item or the shell that you're working with can give you clues into your own practice. And so don't discount any of the mythologies or folklore because they are details from somebody else's life that they have left in writing or have been recorded by someone else to give you clues into your own practice and how to practice and how the ancient people practiced. So while you may love to hear stories about mermaids and mythologies about mermaids, the important thing to remember is they're puzzles. They're little puzzle pieces to a greater practice. And so if you can pull out one gem from each story, then you can take it um, and, and use it in your craft. And I think that I'll do an entire video on this at another time. But I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining me and listening to my video. I hope that you have a wonderful moon day morning and I will see you next time. If you would like to hear more information about my work or upcoming workshops in Georgia, the Pacific Northwest and abroad, then, um, or not abroad, but across the US, um, then you are welcome to visit my website, waterwitchcraft.com. There is an entire list of the events that I will be appearing at and speaking at. Um, and if you're interested in learning with me, the Water Witchcraft website does have some classes, but you can head on over to waterpriestess.com and sign up for the newsletter to be the first one to know, or one of the first ones to know, when my water course, my water priestess course, is launching. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful week, and thank you for joining me. Bye-bye. May the water spirits bless all you do.